Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. For more than two decades, my partner sits in the chair and I come forward. And there's those who can feel that this is real and there are those who would question it. And dear ones, we speak of this because this is the free choice. Today, some of the questions were asked about the veil, the purpose, who you are, why you are. There is indeed something that shrouds a greater truth. Something that you know so well when you're not here. All of you know the greater truth. There's something else involved that is beautiful and positive in this universe, in this galaxy. And when you're not here, you're part of it. There's nothing sinister at all. And when you're not here, you hear that which we call the music that plays of the beauty of God. And you can't hear it, you sense it, because you don't have ears and senses. You're free of the human body and you can hear, see, sense every single frequency that exists. You're part of all that is before you return to this planet and again sequestered to a very limited reality. And all of this is why we love you so. This planet is involved in something bigger than you think. More beautiful than you think. That requires you to be outside of the bias of love. That is the creative source. The veil, dear ones, is starting to get thinner in this new energy. And some of you are feeling it. You're not going to have a greater truth revealed and instead you're going to have something else revealed. That you are cared for and that you are loved and that you can trust the unknown. And that inside you the peace of God that radiates and vibrates with the other side of the veil is starting to grow up. It's starting to be more trusting with synchronicity instead of logic. It's becoming slightly more multidimensional, which means you become bigger in reality. You get away from that which is linear and three dimensional, and you realize I really can be in multiple places at the same time. I can be with God. I can be in the kitchen at the same time. <laughs> I can be driving my car. I can be with God at the same time. I can be doing an errand and at the same time I'm with somebody else in a compassionate way. I can feel them. I can sense them. This is part of a new energy. And for some of you, it's like taking a leap of faith, a step forward into the darkness because the energy that is presenting itself now is one you have never seen. And when you don't have anything to compare it to and you've never been there, for a human being, it's often frightening. So I want to give you a little story. I want to introduce you to a six-year-old little Johnny. And his mother is saying to him, Johnny, we're going to go someplace new today, someplace I've never taken you. Johnny's mind is a six-year-old, doesn't like that. Mommy, tell me where you're taking me so I'll know what, it hap 
what's going to happen? And I'm already frightened. Mom says, look, I'm going to hold your hand almost all the way. You'll be okay. Nothing bad is going to happen. You'll be fine. And Johnny said, yes, Mom, that's what you told me in the first trip to the doctor. And then he stuck me with a needle. There's no needles this time, Johnny. And I know it's, it's no place you've ever been before, but oh, there's, there are some people I want you to meet. Johnny said, no. I don't want to go, Mommy. And he runs away and slams the door in his room. I'm not going to go to an unknown place where I'm going to have to meet new people. It's not right. Let me just play. Let me do something I know about. Mommy, please, please don't take me. Mom goes in and gets him gently. Look, Johnny, you're about to be grown up. You're about to turn seven. It's a big deal. And so be grown up and come with mommy to a place you've never been and meet somebody, people. It's going to be all right, Johnny. Johnny is put in the car and he's afraid. Mom, what's going to happen? Johnny, it's fine. It really is fine. I want you to act like a seven-year-old. Come on. You're no longer six. You'll be all right, really. I'll hold your hand almost to the end. Almost to the end. Mom, what's wrong with the end? Is something going to happen at the end? Well, yes, Johnny, but don't be afraid. I'm afraid. It's all right, Johnny. It's good. You're, look, I think you're going to like it. You think? Mom, please tell me where we're going. Why can't you tell me? It's just part of life, Johnny. It's going to be all right. They arrive at their destination. Johnny doesn't know what, what's going on. They've never been here. It's a building. He can't really read the names. He doesn't know those words. Mom takes him inside. And before they go through a door, she says, look, this is going to be tough. But mommy has to leave you now for just a moment. I'll be right back. Really, honestly, just for a moment. Mommy, you said, you said it would be all right. It is going to be all right. Johnny, we're going to have to turn off the lights now. Oh, mom, come on. It's getting worse. This, this is not needed. Really, what's going to happen? Johnny, we're going to just turn off the lights for a minute. And we're going to open the door. I, I, I can't be with you for just for 35 seconds. Johnny, it's all right. Mom, no. Why, do you, why is this necessary that I have to be alone at all? What are you doing? What is this, some kind of initiation? That's a too big of a word for Johnny to know. <laughs> Mom turns off the light. The door is open. Johnny, walk in there. You're a big boy, you're seven. Johnny is petrified. Mom's asking him to go through a door he's never seen in a building he's never been to in the dark without even holding her hand. But Johnny thinks about it, okay, I'm seven. As I get older, I'll learn more, I know. It's gonna to be tough, I know. I don't really want to be an adult. I'm having too much fun being six. But now I'm seven, about to be seven. It's okay. Mom says she'll be right behind me. I can actually feel her. I know she's there. And he steps forward into the dark room, steps forward. A frightened, afraid, what's going to happen? Is the doctor going to show up with a needle? All the things that a child would think about, all these things. And then suddenly the lights go on. And the crowd yells, happy birthday, Johnny. All his friends are there. The friends have parents are there. There's balloons. There's presents coming. He's seven. All of this for a surprise party. He felt it coming. Johnny had no idea. Johnny walked through his fear. The metaphor, you might have guessed, it's not about death. It's about new energy. 
Spirit says to you, I'm going to take you to a place you've never been. I can't tell you about it. You have to experience it yourself as a human being. In this new energy, there were things that you've never experienced before. Mom carefully did not describe to Johnny the good things, the surprises. She hinted along the way. She'd hold his hand. She'd be supportive. But Johnny's going to have to go through it himself. And he did. And you will as well. There may be a time when they turn off the lights and there's a surprise. And the surprise is nothing you realized or suspected. In your fear, perhaps even in your uncertainty, in will come the surprise that you've asked for, that you needed, that you wanted. Those who've come for a healing, are you getting this? I know who you are. We know who you are. God knows who you are. And you're walking in the dark right now. And there's fear and there's uncertainty. And there's beautiful things coming. Every human is different. In their reaction, in their life, in their struggle, in the problems they have. But you all have something in common right now. Right this moment. You're stepping into an energy you've never been in. And it's uncomfortable. Sometimes a little frightening. Many of you are asking in your questions, well, what's the best way to do this? How do I do this? What's before me? What's next? And all we can say is what is next will be something you experience with us right behind you. Holding your hand most of the way, except in those places of free choice. Where you have to decide to take a step or not. To trust or not. To have faith or not. And in those places, it seems dark. It seems like we're not there holding your hand. And dear ones, we are always with you. But a planet of free choice needs the time for you to make a choice where we're not influencing you. We're not holding your hand. We are saying to you, we have your back. Make the choice that you know for you is correct. And in that statement, you have humanity starting to make choices that have more integrity, that have more light. It's slow. But eventually you grow up and when the light is turned on you realize what you've been through is simply not a test but the fact that you didn't know you just didn't know you'd never trod those steps before you'd never been to the building before called an advanced consciousness of earth you didn't have the knowledge of what it would feel like to trust others like you've never trusted them before. To trust systems that never worked before. To step out with projects that had failed before. You're in the new city of energy. And that's what it feels like to so many of you. I want to tell you something right now. This is new to you. But it's not new to us. We have watched other planets before you make these steps. We've seen what human beings do here and in other places. And so we know what to expect. And that's why our hands are out to catch you. This is not new to us. Now remember something. You have a piece of that which is God inside. Which means you have a piece of you which is not new either. It knows. 
it that being the energy of the creative source inside you how many of you can claim that and step forward in a new energy in a new place with new experiences and be okay because at some level you sense what has come before you sense what we are and what we know the part of you which represents the creative source this is the answer to how can you move into the new energy without apprehension do you have the elegance of maturity old soul to go beyond the linear fear and embrace that part of you which has been there and done that and is beautiful and shines like the sun and if you can you have just taken the first step to the evolution of the planet earth the first step to making your DNA start to vibrate at a greater percentage than 33 or 35 on its way to 44 the question has been asked before how can you go to a higher percentage of operational DNA and I just gave it to you to become more of that which is inside of you which knows everything which is one with everything which has no limit to the knowledge of how everything works where you feel you're not alone ever ever where you can see the folly of fear where you can take footsteps into the darkness and sing along the way that's who you are becoming and that will take your DNA to a much higher percentage and then there will be those who follow you because you show them the way and then there's the party <laughs> and that's how it feels you get beyond yourself beyond the worries and the fears even the apprehensions to a point where at the next juncture when a door opens that you've never been before either and you say let's go and there is no apprehension because you're getting used to it you're starting to understand what trust in the unknown really is you begin to understand what not being alone really is you begin to feel that you're always with a greater power and the light that you push out everywhere you step belongs to you and then it gets bigger and then it even gets bigger and that's a planet that starts to advance into a higher consciousness where there is no war where there is understanding about that which you studied even today putting together instead of tearing apart looking for coherence in everything using the field to synchronize harmonious ideas for new kinds of government new kinds of healing where all of these things are now succinct without corruption or greed or self-servingness where a population starts to work together in a win-win situation where they still have their own cultures their own languages their own ways their own food and they understand there can be differences but when it comes to the love of each other and the appreciation of God inside they are one with everything that's where it goes and how fast it goes there is how fast you're able to be pried from your room when you went there afraid <laughs> we'll always come get you you know that don't you you can hide but we're always going to come get you in love 
and talk to you through the door and say, you are loved dearly. It's going to be all right. Take our hands. Come on out and proceed into the light. All metaphors, all of it, and all so practical and beautiful and understandable by an old soul who's here on purpose, and that's you. No accident that you're here. No accident that you listen to this message so that you can stand up proudly and say, this is why I came. No, not to this room. This is why I came to the planet. Some will say, I'm too old. It's a trick. It's, I'm too old. This should have happened when I was younger. Why now? And the answer is, dear ones, you are the perfect age. Because you have peers that are also too old. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is your perception. And around you, the ones who are your age are looking to you. What have you got that I don't have? We're sitting around worrying about dying and disease. And you're singing, what's going on? And you can say to them, I've discovered something. And I want to tell you about it. I've discovered that there is something greater than me. I feel it. Can't you feel it? Let's talk about it. Let's go there together. Let's be positive together. At every single age in this room, you have peers. Young people, you have children. There's other mothers with other children who haven't figured out the puzzle, who are wringing their hands and they're worried every single time their child steps out the door. They haven't got used to it. And here comes a new energy where their children are saying things and doing things that no children have done before. And that worries them. What's happening? And you're sitting there singing. I know what's happening. And it's so positive and it's so beautiful. Here, let me tell you about it. Now you have a little idea of why you're here, why you're this age, what you have to do. I want you to go out of this place singing in your heart and knowing you're not alone and being ready to sing in front of others, not evangelize. I want you to sing your own love song and let them hear it. That's a metaphor. You love yourself enough to be comfortable and to be balanced. You're singing your own love song to you, to God inside. You're happy with yourself. And they're going to look at you and they're going to say, what in the world has happened to you? Have you disconnected? Don't you know the world's in trouble? And this is what you're going to have to battle. That is the dark. If you wondered what that dark and light is, it's the consciousness of those who are in fear. And when you're not, and they're going to be all ears, as they say, to find out what you got. I want you to be ready to tell them in a way that's beautiful, not threatening. And as something that you pull to yourself for them to see without you telling them. And you should too. Don't ever say that. Don't ever go there. Just say, I found something for me. Why don't you take a look? Maybe, just maybe. It will be attractive for you. And then love is so attractive. And you want more and more of it. And so will your friends. And so will your neighbors. Maybe even so will the family you're about to see at Christmas. <laughs> you know what I mean, don't you? These are the challenges before you now. Becoming more balanced than you ever have before in the face of everything in your life. That is what an old soul can do. Go away from this place singing your own love song for the love that you have in you, for you, for God, in spite of everything.
That's maturity. That's compassion. That's what an old soul can do. And so it is.